We don't judge here at Bug Realms. Race, sexual orientation, none of it matters to us. We're just happy to have you as a viewer. So for today's invert, wave your pride flags with pride, I, I guess. I didn't think those words through properly, did I? Let's get on with the video. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I hope my awful intro and the title of this video has helped you figure out what we've got in today's video. So unboxed from this box here is this tub. I believe it was the last one I pulled out in the last video, but it's actually the second one we're showing today. So if you haven't guessed, let me give you another clue. This is another animal previously kept in the realm, but you'd have to be a very hardcore fan to know what this animal was based on that bit of information. And that is because it was very, very early days of the original Bug Realms channel that we ever owned one of these. In fact, I think there may have only been one video, possibly two, I can't quite remember, but not a lot. So remember, let me know in the comments below if you guessed correctly, either by title or by my hint. And also, it's coming up to Christmas, sort of, slowly but surely. Uh, but in advance, we are advertising the Merry Stickmas Jumpers. Uh, more information given on the first video of these unique animal unboxing, but there will be a link in the description below if you want your very own Christmas jumper. It doesn't say Bug Realms anywhere on it if you're too embarrassed to say you watch my channel, but it does have Merry Stickmas. It does have an Extatso Materiatum female, adult female, that I currently own with a little Christmas hat on. So if you want to purchase yourself one for Christmas, please make sure to do so by clicking in the link in the description below. Right, so it's time to tell you what we've got. And I think this is probably going to be the most entertaining uh, of the unboxings out of this series. Let me just cut the tape off and I will show you. Oh, I've missed this knife. Mm. Don't kiss knives, bad for you. Top tip, always get the tape as much off the enclosure as you can when you're unpacking, because the last thing you want is something to get stuck on the stickiness. So I'm actually gonna go make myself another cup of coffee, because I've got four or five videos to film today. And then we'll have a look at what's in here. So in this tub is the Cardisoma armatum, or better known, the rainbow crab. Now last time I got one of these, I opened the tub and it already walked out. Now I don't wanna lose it on the table. You do have to be careful with these because their pinches can break skin. Oh, and they are quick. They are quick. Can you see it? Dun 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 dun. dun. Turn this around for you. There we go, look. Yo, oh, hello. And it's out. My lighting is not on key today. Wow, that is quicker than I expected. You are fast. Let me get the lighting better for you guys. Right, I had to catch him back in the tub because he's quick. But there it is. Rainbow crab. Now these are a land crab, so you only need a dish of water deep enough to submerge themselves in. Kind of lubricates the book lungs, I presume they're still called book lungs in crabs, um, for them to molt. Where are you going? Doing a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. So yeah, my pride reference obviously is the fact that they are called rainbow crabs. Oh, can you, can you not? I think I'm gonna have to capture this crab yet again, folks. Oh, not off the edge of the table there, you little wee bugger. Uh, <laughs> he's on a mission. Right, I'm gonna capture him up. We're gonna set up an enclosure. No, 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 no. Edge of table, not edge of table. 
I knew this would be entertaining. I knew it. I'm one-handed right now. These things are mental fast, man, mental fast. So I don't want to stress it out. So yeah, go hide under the phone. That's it. No, don't try and push through. <laughs> this is class, this is actually class. I'm wondering if I've got a female this time. I had a male last time. You can tell by the underside of these, but you know what? I don't actually want to pick it up, believe it or not. You can pick it up um, very carefully, but I'm going to choose not to because this thing is flighty and I don't really want to have my finger pinched either. So look at it, look. It's like you don't tell me where to go, bug boy. Right, anyway. I'm struggling a little bit with my one hand here. Let me pot it back up yet again. We'll create a home for it and I'll tell you more about it when I can actually concentrate on what I'm saying. <laughs> there, you wee blighter. What a nightmare. But it makes for a fun video, right? It makes for a fun video. So let me set up a home and I'll tell you why I'm doing my home a little differently this time to last time. And I'll give you the info that I do know about this species. So I have chosen this old fish tank. It does have a lid too. What we need is a land section and a water section. Now last time the substrate I used was cocoa fiber. This time I'm going with sand and a bit of moss. And the reason I'm not using the cocoa fiber this time is it only needs a slight strand to fall in the water. And this crab, honestly, it, they destroy their surroundings. So climbing in and out, bring the cocoa fiber in and it absorbs it all the way back through, making this mushy marsh, which is fine, but no water left in here. And you're daily topping this up. Now there are some important key factors to this, which I'll explain while we set it up. But first things first, let's get ourselves a water section and a sand section. Now my sand is actually slightly mixed with cocoa fiber anyway. You can use either. I hope I've got enough because this is the last of my sand. I forgot how deep that uh, dish actually was. Ah, oh, something satisfying about pouring sand. Oops. Oh no, that's my old decor. We don't want those bits in there, blimey. Whew, dusty. Oh no, I'm so not prepared, ow. Yeah, these things are spiky. I used them um, with like my beetles and stuff that have a really hard um, shell or exoskeleton. But uh, don't use these spiky things with your spiders and stuff because you're gonna burst some abdomens. Right, I should pull them out when they fall in, sort it. There we go. Okay, so there wasn't quite enough sand to reach the top. And the important thing is the crab needs to be able to climb in and out freely, not to get trapped in their water section. But I wanted it to be deep enough for the crab to submerge. So hopefully with a bit of a layer of moss and some decor in here, we can work a way around doing that. And this is how it looks. So it was quite difficult to build a ramp with something so narrow, but this is a very solid bit of bark with moss on the top plus the stick. The crab's got plenty of space underneath to molt and it should be able to clamber up here or up on here and over the side. We've got a depth of sand, enough for it to bury itself, plus we're gonna add some more moss to this. And then we've got our hide. So we've got two bits of bark here where the crab can hide underneath. So we're gonna add a bit more moss to this now, and then we'll top up the water and get the crab in. Okay, now there are sources that say these do fresh and salt water, but there's also plenty of sources saying that they do fine purely on fresh water. Now, don't use the water from your taps, get yourself some still spring water, natural spring water. Um, it doesn't have all the nasty chemicals you have in your kitchen taps that can cause them any harm. 
So let's fill this bad boy up. I am going to get hold of some more sand and top this enclosure up a little bit more. But for now, oh no, don't float. It's okay. All right, I'm going to also pour some on here. Wet sand it will hold a burrow better. So where I'm soaking this sand surroundings, when the crab burrows, the sand should hold in place. Um, oh, blimey, there's a little centipede on here. Where did you come from? Ah, oh, we'll take a look at that centipede in a little bit, if you like. Popped him in a pot, we'll look at him at the end of the video. Okay, so there we have it. You see our fresh pool of water, woohoo! Climbing platform, wet sand, like if you watch this, put my finger in, it holds. And it will remain to do that for the crab's burrow. What do you think of this home? Again, it's not perfect. You know, there are better people out there for crabs. I know very little about crabs, but my last one, I actually had it for a few years um, and it did absolutely fine. The only problem I had, as I said before, was the amount of cocoa fiber absorbing and it just ended up living in a clunk of mud, which would have been no good for molting. So shall we get the crab in, ladies and gentlemen, and have a look at the new Pride of the Bug Realms collection? Not quite sure if this is the best angle for you, but it's what you're going to get from me today. Hey, grabby, grabby, do, do, do. Oh, now it doesn't want to run out. Just give it a little. Come on. There you go. There you go. Shall we add in your nice wet moss? Hmm? Crabs make this weird noise as well. I don't know enough about them to say what it is, but it's almost like they're bubbling. They're like, pop, 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 pop. Don't know if it's picking up the noise on here. So I'm gonna put another bit of moss inside the hide so it's got a nice damp patch when it wants to hide. Okay, so there it is, our crab. Now, if you wanna know about the diet for the rainbow crab, they are scavengers. So they will be eating dead invertebrates, some live invertebrates. They will scavenge, they'll eat some of this moss, they'll have fruit and veg. They will take whatever they can get hold of. Natural scavengers. Look at those mouth parts there. <laughs> now this is really, really cool. Now obviously, as I have said, I am just a hobbyist. Um, I am no expert by any means on crabs, so if I have done something wrong here, I will amend it and fix it. But we're gonna see how things go. I'll see how this crab is, see if it seems comfortable, seems happy. If it spends more time in one area, I'll work out if that's because it's a more humid area or if that's because it's something else. And you can see it's already gonna start bulldozing there. It's already moving some of that moss away. so cool shall we try a macro lens on this crab yeah go on we like an excuse to use the macro don't we so macro is on now i can't fit my camera in this enclosure very well with the microphone on but you can have some shots at the texture of this crab those little lumpy bits and the eyes of the crab knows it's the boss right About the best you can get with macro I'm afraid. So here's a back view of the tank, quite hideous from the back but we don't have to look at it from the back, it's just the way I'm sitting. I wanted the crab to uh, explore a bit of the water zone while we were filming but that's something I can check up on later. As I said, these are filmed so far in advance that I'm trying to aim enough footage to last till December or New Year that by the time I film for this crab again will probably be during December or January time and I can tell you if I had to make any changes 
and how well the crab is doing. I'm pretty chuffed, you know, overall. I don't think this is a bad setup at all. Could be wrong, but I quite like it. And the crab's staying out in the open, so it's obviously not too startled. So how to finish off this video then? Shall we look at that random centipede that had been living on that bit of moss? I think this crab probably would have had it to be fair, but uh, we're gonna need a macro for it. I've popped it in here. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. That's the centipede I found. So let's pop the macro on, have a look at this peed, and end the video. It's just behind there, the centipedes are so fast. Come on. Ooh. Sorry, nearly escaped. There. Sorry, it's through the lid, but this thing, as soon as it's on the move, it's going to be out of this enclosure. I'd like to set it free back in the garden. <laughs> Grooming. Can I take the lid off, or will it start up? There. Little centipede. Having a little green during a crab video. Pretty cool. Oh, I know that this is a native centipede, by the way, because this was a bag of moss that I ended up keeping out in my garden for a little bit. Um, so it's obviously crawled on there. Yeah, real cute though, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, no one needs to see my ugly mug at the end of this video, but remember, ladies and germs, if you do want the Merry Stickmas jumper, it will be available until Christmas Day um, on my store. There'll be a link in the description below. So let's say bye to the cra crab. Crab? Hello? Are you in the hide? Yes. Ow. These bloody spiky things. It is in there. You can probably just about make out a little bit of colour. That's a good thing. Crab is now found its hide. Happy days. I'm going to pop a lid on this. Not that it should be able to climb out of here. But I'm going to pop on the lid regardless. Just to hold in the moisture levels and I will see you in the next video. So we have had a thorny cricket, we have had a rainbow crab. What else do you think is quite unique? Was this crab unique enough for you, especially to be featured on this channel at least? I think it kind of was. So what are we waiting on next? Something I've never ever owned. Anyway, see you in that video. Take care guys, bye bye.